In this video we're going to take a quick look at how to complete place a satellite in orbit contracts. There are a few science nodes necessary in order to perform these, first being science tech for access to batteries. All probes will need a power supply. In addition, you will need electrics for the photovoltaic panels, solar panels. These two are absolutely required to perform these contracts. There are a couple of additional nodes that I prefer to have. Uh, fuel systems, specifically for the Rockham X 48-7S engine, very light, very efficient, great for probes. Um, you can use the LV909, but the 48-7S is significantly better. You also need advanced flight control for the Probodyne Octo, although it's not necessarily required, it does allow you to use SAS, which is of great benefit during these contracts. We'll now move on and have a look at our probe. It's a basic stock design utilizing the 48-7S engine on a very light probe core, two batteries, commutatron, solar panels, and an octo. This very light assembly uses very high delta V, um, very useful for matching these orbits. The second stage will consist of an LV-909 and a stock fuel tank. Um, these two stages together would be capable of orbit, but we want to have plenty of fuel to use in orbit, so we will use a third stage with the LVG-30. It is not required, but I prefer to add stabilizers, mostly for visual effect. Moving ahead to our orbit, we will start in an 80 kilometer circular orbit around Kerbin. The first step is to match your inclination to your target orbit. Inclination changes should always take place in an ascending or descending node. To locate this for your target orbit, you will focus your view on Kerbin, then reduce your perspective of the target orbit and your current orbit into a two-dimensional perspective. To locate a node, you will align your perspective until your ascending node and descending node intersect at a single point on your orbit. It is here that you will place your maneuver node. Once your maneuver node is placed, you will then have to burn either normal or anti-normal in order to change into your desired inclination. To put it simply, normal is up, anti-normal is down. In our case, we need to burn anti-normal in order to lower the trajectory in front of us to match the targeted orbit. Using this method requires you to visually match your orbits. Inclination changes at lower altitudes and near your periapsis will be relatively more expensive in terms of delta V than inclination changes executed at high altitudes or near apoapsis. Once your burn is complete, you will need to visually confirm that you have indeed matched your desired inclination. If adjustments are necessary, you may repeat the same matching procedure on the opposite side of your orbit by again aligning the ascending and descending nodes to find your maneuver point. If your inclination is satisfactory, the next step will be to perform two burns in order to raise your apses to the necessary altitudes. In order to ensure that the argument of your periapsis matches the contract target, you will need to perform a similar maneuver as with your ascending and descending nodes by overlaying the periapsis and apoapsis into a single intersecting point on your orbit. From here you may adjust your altitude to match either the periapsis or apoapsis as necessary. Unfortunately our current orbit is no longer entirely circular and will require some additional fiddling to get it correct. While the argument of periapsis is typically ignored in more circular contract orbits, it is good practice to match these points as, as you get into more eccentric orbits, it does become a concern. Each contract has a built-in margin for error, typically expressed in one of three ways, a reasonable deviation, a marginal deviation, or a minimal deviation. This particular contract has marginal deviation, which allows us to be somewhat inaccurate and still complete the contract. In this particular case, our inclination is somewhat off from the contract target inclination. However, since we are allowed marginal deviation, 
it will not be necessary to correct in order to satisfy the contract. The final burn necessary to complete matching the contract orbit is much simpler than the previous two, simply requiring you to place a node at your current angle axis and adjusting your periapsis to match the remaining node for the target contract. Again, with marginal deviation, you do not have to be 100% accurate. However, it's always best to be as accurate as possible. Once you have a satisfactory node, all that is left to do is to execute your burn and collect your payment. With your contract window open, you will notice that it will tick over to indicate that you have indeed satisfactorily matched the orbit in which case you will stop your burn and simply maintain the orbit for 10 seconds. While this method is by no means the most efficient way to match an orbit, you can easily match any orbit with three burns. Next we'll take a quick look at how to execute the same method with MechJeb's autopilot. MechJeb has a tendency to be inaccurate with high thrust to weight ratios requiring you to set a thrust limiter keep your thrust to weight ratio around 1.5. Additionally, you can set your tolerance level to 0.05 is about the lowest effective setting that you can use. While manual execution relies entirely on visual confirmation, using MechJeb will need the information in the contract window in order to appropriately set your inclination. As we know from our earlier execution, you will need to burn anti-normal in order to match this inclination, which means you will need to do a negative inclination change. You will once again use the 2D perspective to locate your node, however, as opposed to placing a maneuver node, you will do this to locate the time at which you need to execute your burn, which you will then input into MechJeb. Once you have created and executed your node, you will visually confirm that you have indeed burned in the correct direction and that your inclination matches. As with our previous execution, the next step will be to change your apoapsis to match one of the nodes on the contract orbit. In this case, we'll be matching the periapsis. Once you have entered your desired altitude into MacJet, you will once again Use the 2D perspective trick in order to locate the proper time at which to initiate your burn. Aligning in this method ensures that the argument of periapsis will indeed match the contract. As with manual execution, it is not necessary for the burns to be completely accurate in order to complete the contracts. The margin for error still applies. The final burn is again the easiest as you will simply have to enter the altitude of the remaining node into MacJeb and execute at your current apoapsis. The projected orbit then should match nearly perfectly. With your contract window open again it will tick over to indicate when you have satisfactorily matched the orbit. Collect your payment and repeat as necessary. Thanks for watching and I hope this has been helpful.